So it's now been confirmed. It's now been confirmed. It's now been confirmed that Frankie Ocean, Frankie Ocean has dropped out of Coachella completely for the following weekend. Because Coachella, as most of you guys know, it's a two weekend affair. Weekend one just happened. Weekend two is coming up. And Frank Ocean has decided not to perform at weekend two as headliner and just bow out after a disastrous first showing. For me, I have to say, I'm kind of surprised. I'm kind of surprised. I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm kind of surprised. I thought because the first headlining set from Frank Ocean went so badly, he turned up an hour late. Um, he got rid of the ice skaters last minute. He didn't want to live stream. He was barely singing the songs. He had some DJ girl come and play and she got thrown into the mire. Even though she's a good DJ in her own regard, she got thrown into it and people didn't want to hear her and she sounded terrible or it kind of came across badly. And generally it was a pretty mediocre show. I thought, again, maybe I'm naive. Maybe I'm too optimistic. Um, I honestly did think that Frank would see the response from it, the fact that he's been away for so long and the fact that for the most part, Aside from the critics who generally like to kind of poo-poo on Frank and shit on him because they just don't like or understand his music or they get mostly because they hate his fans because with any kind of kind of with any artist who kind of has a very rabid fan base, they can be kind of annoying also the fan bases. So people usually hate the fan bases of these artists more so than the artists themselves because Frank hardly says anything. He's hardly around. So there's not much to hate him for. But I think even the people that did hate him, the thing that probably would have hurt him mostly, I think, or I would have thought would be his fans were the ones that disappointed. His actual fans that love and adore him, the ones that buy all his merch, the ones that buy all his vinyl, the ones that buy all his esoteric, highfalutin, you know, paperweight magazines, right? <laughs> the ones who buy all that shit, apart from who don't care, he doesn't drop music for ages. All those fans who are saving up all their pennies to buy his overpriced Homer jewelry. All of those people were the ones he disappointed. And I would have thought he would have been like, you know what? I disappointed my actual core fan base. I'm going to make it right. And if he would have done the bare minimum, the big of the bare minimum boys, if he would have done the bare minimum and turned up the following week and just sung, the imagine the same set list he'd done last week, just sung all the songs without doing the whole like you know flexing and doing the whole playboy carty dances on the stage and not dance and not flipping singing if you would have sung all the same songs the second week no dj any live streamed everybody would have been on their feet clapping he would have been getting right up some pitchfork on flipping forbes on esquire on airmail he would have been getting people throwing flowers at him it would have been amazing People would have been like, oh my God, this guy is one of the most creative artists in the world. He's genre defining. He's important, blah, blah, blah. He would have smashed it if he would have just decided, I'm going to sing all the songs. I'm going to get rid of the DJ and I'm going to live stream. It would have killed it. So the fact that he hasn't done it, <laughs> the fact that he didn't do the bare minimum means that he fucking hates his fans. Frank Ocean hates his fans. I'm convinced of it. I'm convinced he hates his fans. Why do I say that? My theory, my theory is, this is a weird theory to say, it's my theory is, if you're a Frank Ocean fan like I am, you know the history of Frank Ocean. And the history of Frank Ocean is that prior to his moniker, Frank Ocean, he went by his actual name, which is Lenny Brooks or Brewer, whatever, it, however you pronounce that surname. And he was in the industry for a long time, songwriting and writing on himself. He never really got any play. Then he created this moniker of Frank Ocean. Then he gets signed to Def Jam. He puts out a mixtape, Nostalgia Ultra, does bits, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, long story short, he goes to do Channel Orange and Blonde. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, from the beginning, he was never really getting any love and shine from the industry. Frank Ocean was always the way that he is now, always incredibly gifted, incredible songwriter, incredible artist overall, incredible voice, but the industry didn't know what to do with him. So I think very early on in Frank's career, he got burned by the music industry. The music industry burned him. 
and he got pissed off with it with how you know toxic it is the contracts um the you know the the high the executives who don't know what they're doing or saying all these people in the industry that kind of make you fall out of love of music because the business of music is so brutal but then he gets a lucky break where nostalgia ultra catches he drops channel orange four years until um, five or four years after that you know endless and blonde comes out together then he's off the label he does that whole finesse thing but there's always been big chunks of breaks in frank's career and i feel like those chunks of breaks were basically representative of his mind state so my theory is that frank ocean got burned by the music industry early on and was over it then he got a lucky break and got a record deal and got a fan base and dropped one of the best mixtapes of all time in Nostalgia Ultra. It's actually an album, but let's say it's a mixtape, one of the best ever. Then he becomes this big star. Odd Future, Features, whatever it may be. Him himself, the tours, the merchandise, the videos, everything's amazing. The artistic vision, top notch. But he actually doesn't love music anymore. He's just going through the motions. But he's one of those guys similar to like an athlete, because we have them in football. Uh, we have a player in, in Arsenal, actually. Ben White, he's a good example of it. He's very gifted at football, very talented. Obviously, he plays for Arsenal. He made it in professional football. It's very hard to make it. But he hates football. He doesn't like training. He doesn't like talking about the game. And most likely, he'll be one of the players who isn't going to start coaching when he retires. He just plays football because he happens to be really gifted at it. That's the only reason. And I think Frank Owens is the same. He's very talented and gifted at making music. But it's not really his calling. He doesn't want to actually do it. Which is why anything that requires, anything that is like a the standard thing that artists do, like giving interviews, like updating fans, like doing live shows, going on tours, he doesn't do. <laughs> because he doesn't like it. But then the one thing that you've seen him doing really well and smashing, what has it been? Design. Homer. It's a bit overpriced, but you can't deny the artistic vision, the creative direction behind it. The taste level is top notch. I bet, I bet the store probably looks amazing. The magazines, they're, you know, exaggerated paperweights, but the magazines, top notch. The collaboration he did with Prada, those jackets, those anoraks, the, the quarter zips. I, I think, have you guys seen it? Um, the Frank Ocean Prada anorak top notch all of this stuff that frank ocean has designed outside of flipping music all this stuff has been top notch and it's all dropped it's all released when it's meant to release it's all sold out it's all done amazingly well all of this stuff is the stuff that he actually enjoys this stuff right um homer homer jewelry let's get that stuff up on here so you see what it flipping looks like this shit all flipping beautiful all the stars are wearing it, right? Drake is flipping always head to toe, dripping in flipping Homer jewelry. He loves this stuff. This is what Frank Ocean actually enjoys. All of this creative direction, how the the, the product shots, the, the the lifestyle images and lookbooks inside of the flipping, you know, magazines and catalogs. Who do you think is doing it? Frank Ocean is doing all this stuff. He's obviously hiring people to do it, but it's all his creative direction. All of this stuff is his creative direction. This is what he actually loves to do. But when it comes to doing music and standing on the stage and singing, he doesn't like it. I'm convinced of it. This is why we get this version of Frank Ocean. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, right? Why is it that more artists, especially someone like Frank, who got out of his deal with Def Jam in that legendary finesse, one of the greatest finesses of all time, he was able to drop albums out under his own label, reap all the rewards, has a rabid fan base that buys everything that he does, whether it's a t-shirt, jewellery, LPs, um, magazines, it doesn't matter, they love him. Why do artists like him, who has the ability to be loose and do what he wants, not just come out and say, hey guys, I'm taking a sabbatical. Obviously, you know what's happening with my brother and RIP to you know, Frank Ocean's brother and whatnot. I'm still grieving over that. But in general, I just want to take some time away from music and pursue my, my creative endeavours I'm actually passionate about. Why don't more artists just say that? Because if he would have just said that in the beginning, no one would no one would really kind of bother him as much or care or put high expectation on things. But when you don't say nothing and you're away for like seven years, then you pop up and you agree to do Coachella. 
it's within reason that people expect you to pull in a sick performance. You've been away for seven years. You've accepted one of the most normy, um, popular festivals in the world. This is not some like, you know, um, underground chin stroker uh, boutique festival. This is the most commercial festival there is. There's sponsor booths everywhere. People taking pictures and shit. Bad Bunny's headlining. Blink-182. You have to come and step up. And he didn't. And I feel like he really fucked over his fans in a big way in that regard. And it seems like nowadays, as time goes by, people don't really put up with that shit anymore. You see a lot with Kanye. Towards the end of Kanye's freakouts, people start to give less and less shits. They're like, look, we don't care if you make good music. We don't care if you make cool clothes or you make cool sneakers. You're annoying. And people just get over it very quickly. They're like, you know what? We're over you, man. Allow it. You're too much stress. And I think the same thing's happening with Frank Ocean. People are kind of getting over him a little bit. They're kind of figuring out, you know what? You're a little bit pretentious. A little bit pretentious. You're kind of insufferable. It's a gig. You accepted it a long time ago. It was in the books a while ago. If you weren't in the right mental state to do it, cancel. If it's been a long time since you've done it, come up and put on a good show for your fans. Suck it up and put on a good show. And part of me thinks the whole rationale about his grieving is true, but it's also an, a convenient excuse. Many artists go on tour, create music, um, do interviews and do whatever with mad shit going on behind them in their personal life. But if you're a professional... <laughs> You suck it up and you just go on. You don't do all this stuff, not all this theatrics and nonsense. Because the people you should feel sorry for, or I feel sorry for, are the guys and girls who bought a ticket for the second weekend. This is the ultimate honey dick. You got a crappy performance from Frank Ocean the first weekend, and you probably thought, man, he's probably going to come harder the next weekend. Like I did. Because you bought a ticket, like, man, he's going to come harder next weekend. He's going to really deliver. And then you, you wake up today. Oh, no, he cancelled. And they replaced him. They replaced him with Blink-182. <laughs> Blink-182. They've got some good songs. What the fuck do they know about headlining Coachella? No, but you know what I mean? Like, they've they got some decent songs. But if you're a Frank Ocean fan, there's no way you're going to be happy with Blink-182. There's no way. There's no way. That's not what you want to hear. If fucking Odd Future fans, Odd Future fans booed Drake off of the stage at the at one of those golf wang flog now festivals because they thought Frank Ocean was meant to be performing. They booed Drake off the stage. Imagine Frank Ocean fans being happy with Blink-182. If you're not happy with Drake, you can't be happy with Blink-182. So Frank really fucked over his fans in a big way, man. In a big, 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 big way. And... The honest truth of it is that he doesn't give a shit. And even though his fans are really upset, all it takes is him putting out another album, another live tour video thing or something, and it's all forgiven. But I think in general, for me, it doesn't, it shouldn't matter. But I'm, I'm getting to a place, I'm maybe with age. If an artist becomes like insufferable, too pretentious and too up their own ass to kind of follow and keep an eye on and stuff... I get exhausted and I just move on. Quietly. I don't make a fuss about it. I don't say, I'm never going to listen to it again and I break my CD in half. No. I just quietly move on to somebody else. And I think most people are like that nowadays. The, the kind of, you know, obsessive fandom where you just forgive everything, it doesn't exist as it once did. So I think he's playing with fire in this regard. But I still think, deep down, Frank, he's not really into music like that. I, I don't think so. I think he's just gifted in music. He was blessed from the gods with a gift to make music, clearly, but it's not really his passion. And it shows in anything he does. Because he the last place he wants to be is on stage singing. <laughs> he fucking hates it. And it's not even like anxiety and shit. You can tell, like, he does not want to be there. He turned up the first weekend in an anorak, um, some lounge pants and house slippers. <laughs> and a durag. Like, the durag you go to bed with. Not even a durag to go out with. The, the bed durag. Like, he doesn't care. Anyway, let's read the article to finish it. Frank Ocean will not return to Coachella stage for the festival's second weekend, dropping out after sustaining two fractures and a sprain to his left leg. When did he fracture and sprain his, le his left leg? When he was doing the fucking, um, the rolly dance. 
when he was doing the fucking bust down dance. That's when he flipping sprained his ankle and he's flipping leg. Come on, man. This excuse is so lame. If you're going to be a diva and you're going to cancel, just cancel for being a diva. Don't make up excuses. I've got fucking, um, what you call it? I've got a headache. <laughs> I broke my back. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, in a statement provided by when, and this is more fun. He provided a statement to TMZ. In a statement provided Wednesday to TMZ, Frank's rep said, after suffering an injury to his leg on the festival grounds in the week leading up to weekend one. So he was in the festival grounds at Coachella doing backflips, doing parkour, doing some movement shit, doing some fucking, you know, some um, bodily yoga -y type of stuff with like grunt noises and shit, right? And he what, sprained his leg or playing hacky sack because Frank looks like a hacky sack kind of guy doing hacky sack and shit and then he twisted his ankle or some shit. Come on, man. People have performed with broken legs before. Like, come on. Like, I'm just thinking now, didn't 2 chains? 2 chains were an entire tour in a fucking wheelchair because he broke his leg. He performed an entire tour. He didn't cancel it. He did his entire tour sitting in a fucking wheelchair. Come on, brother. After suffering a leg injury, Frank Ocean was unable to perform the intended show, but was still intent on performing. And in the 72 hours, the show was reworked out of necessity. They continue. On doctor's advice, Frank is not able to perform in the second weekend due to two fractures and sprain in his leg. It doesn't matter, bruv. Like, he could have legitimately sat or lay down in a bed like Tim Dillon when he recorded that podcast in a bed style and people would be happy with it. Frank tells us it was chaotic. There, there was some beauty. It, it, it wasn't what I intended to show, but I did enjoy being out there and I'll see you soon. <laughs> He's not seeing you soon. You will not see Frank Ocean again for another year, minimum. He's gone, gone. He's going back to his fucking New York studio, his bungalow apartment or whatever amazing place that he has with great furniture, drawing amazing pieces of art chilling out with Omar, Omar, Apollo, you know, watching cool shit, taking pictures of each other. Like, he's not going to be seen for a while. Uh, TMZ broke the story. Ocean allegedly hurt his ankle on the festival grounds leading up to the show, causing some last-minute changes. So Pierce thinks were very much as initially thought. And there's some people there. Um, oh, shit, is that G-Eazy? 